Well, we got our look at the Switch SOC today. Uh, Chipworks put out their x-ray for the chip itself. They took a full x-ray of SOC and they showed us what it looked like inside and it actually looks exactly like a Tegra X1. Real quick before we get started looking at it, the Tegra X1 is a great chip, so a lot of people online seem freaked out that it's an X1. Uh, I'll go into a little bit later as to why they probably could not get a better chip, uh, mostly because one doesn't exist right now, but we'll, we'll look at that a little later. Let me just show you the x-rays real quick. So here is a standard X1 with some of the stuff kind of highlighted to make it easier to see. And then here is the Switch's x-ray of its chip, and if you take a look at it, it looks exactly the same. There's actually, physically, there's no real differences. Now, clock speeds may be different. Um, from what I understand, they have had to play around the clocks to make it within reason for thermal throttling because a lot of the chips, like the X1s that are on, like, the, say, the uh, NVIDIA Android TV, they do throttle. Same with any of the tablets that it's in. I know the Pixel, I believe, has one, and it throttles like crazy. So that at least makes sense. Of course, off the dock, it has to clock down to account for battery life, things like that. But Overall, the chips look the same physically. Now, let me show you another picture. This is a cool dude over on NeoGAF, name of Thraktor, has done some cool work overall, but they actually put this picture out to show you kind of an idea of what's going on in here. They basically drawed it out and everything. So you have both of the stream processors for the GPU. Now the X1 has two of them, and that's basically just processes. It's, it's exactly what it sounds like, stream processors. And that just deals with uh, the CUDA cores and everything that's going out of the chip. So we have two of them, and then you can see at the bottom there, it has four A57s and four A53s. We still don't know if the A53s are active. Based on previous X1s, usually the A53s were uh, deactivated, and the A57s were the only active ones. Then on the left side, you see the DDR4 interface that then goes out to the two RAM sticks that are out there, the two RAM chips. And overall, this is pretty much the same chip. So as we went along, especially when they announced the TX2 uh, dev kit that came out, the Jetson TX2. I believe at that point it started to become kind of obvious that if NVIDIA wasn't able to put an X2 or P1, whatever you want to call them, uh, at this point it seems to be called the X2 because the TX2, if they weren't able to put that chip in their newest Android TV, I think it was getting pretty obvious that they weren't able to put it in the Switch. Now, I think a lot of people were hoping, even if it's Maxwell-based, that's fine, but maybe there's some kind of customization. I think a lot of people, it, you know, obviously we had to speculate because there's no obvious answer because for some weird reason Nintendo and Nvidia were not transparent at all with what's in the system. Uh, now I know Nintendo doesn't usually care as much about specs, at least uh, you know revealing them, divulging them to us, whatever you want to call it, but I was hoping that Nvidia at least would have been a little more transparent since Nvidia likes to get up on stage and just start talking about stuff in general when it comes to specs. I have a feeling a lot of the, they talked about you know engineering years, I think a lot of that was probably put into the low-level APIs and developing physics engines, things like that for this chip to work correctly with big games like Zelda or any of the other games coming out, probably Mario Odyssey down the road, Xenoblade. Games with huge open worlds that need things like physics rendering, stuff like that. I think that's what the low-level APIs are for, and that would allow it to run games that probably aren't possible on something like any of the tablets you see or anything like that. I think they developed this specifically for games first, and that's more than likely why they didn't care about Netflix or anything, I guess, but that stuff's all probably coming over eventually. So I guess they couldn't put the X2 or I even customize it. That's a little interesting. They didn't, they decided not to really customize it, probably aside from the clock speeds, because again, it's going to run off battery and it's going to run in the dock. Now they could probably change clock speeds going forward if they need to. They already did that once apparently with the portability clocks where they added a, a bump in those clocks, I guess, to help out. I know Digital Foundry was talking about those, but overall, it's very interesting that this is the chip they went with the X1. Now it don't get me wrong, the X1's a good chip. It is the best chip you can get right now, technically, at a consumer level. And I have to imagine customizing it to the way that a lot of people online were speculating about or hoping it may have been very expensive. Now, when I first saw Zelda, it was very hard to believe that that was running on an X1. I think a lot of people were thinking that. When you see how big an open world that game is, it's it gets a little hard to believe that an X1 would be rendering that and running it fully. Now, there's a lot going on there. And to consider that a mobile processor is doing it with the lower clocks that are apparently being reported is pretty impressive overall. But I guess the idea of an X2, because it's not ready yet, it just wasn't ready for the Switch. Now, is this really a big deal? Probably not. Honestly, the Switch 
is easier to program for by a lot apparently than the Wii U and I think that helps with things like Vulkan, Unreal, NVN. All these like low level APIs are there for developers to use and I mean so many developers talk about how it's easy to move stuff over. Now the big question is, will third parties show up to the Switch? Uh, they will if it sells well, and that's really where Nintendo needs to come in and either pay developers to come in and make games, attract them as best they can, maybe with lower royalty fees on the games, or just make games like, for example, Pokemon that will bring people to the system. Because if there is a large user base on a system like the Switch that's easy to develop for, you will see a lot of third-party games show up. Now, of course, Nintendo is very fortunate. They have uh, some advantages over Microsoft and Sony in that apparently they can just release a game like Zelda, a game of the year, you know, when they want. So, I mean, it's not very often that you see a company like Nintendo that can come along, make a 10 out of 10 game like Zelda for what a lot of people, review sites say, because that's just going to push the system. They can do that. A Mario Kart will sell very well. People will buy the Switch for Mario Kart. I know people don't think that, but they will. They will. And just other games coming out, Mario Odyssey will do very well. Pokemon, if Pokemon shows up, that will move obscene amount of switches and we could get to the end of the year with 10 million switches out if pokemon shows up and really you could complain about nintendo not putting a better chip in i just don't think there was any options i think the x1 is what was there they wanted to do this so badly you could tell with the wii u that they had this idea at first and they realized the technology was not there yet because the x1 didn't really show up until 2015. So, it, I mean, it was a little while down the pipeline until the X1 showed up, kind of burst on the scene, but had nowhere to be. Really, there was no need for the X1 until now with the Switch. And you know what? It's it, Nintendo is going to do what they want to do. And in this case, I think they have a great idea. The Switch is, a, is an awesome idea, something you could take with you on the go. And it's going to be a little while, for, I think, for the battery technology desperately needs to catch up with technology in general. Battery technology has been dragging its feet for so long now. And I do think that that is a big problem with tech stuff in general. I mean, batteries all over the place, phone batteries, tablet batteries, they're just not as good as everyone wants them to be. But I do think Nintendo and Nvidia probably have a pretty good partnership going. I think they're gonna be together for a while. And I do think that there is a chance that the X2 shows up in a Switch of some kind, probably a refresh in three years maybe, where you see a, the, the new Switch comes out. And I think they're just gonna use the X2 for better battery life. I think you'll see it come out. It won't be that much more powerful, but the battery life will be better, I have a feeling. And it'll probably come out instead of three hours of battery, you get five to six hours of battery when you play Zelda, and that'll be great. But as it stands now, the X2 does pull quite a bit of power when you wanna run at its theoretical clock speeds. And really the difference between the two, if you put them to a battery, for example, that's 40 you know not 4,000 something milliamp hour battery it's not going to work it, it just won't it, it's it's to the point where the x1 was the best decision they had I, I do i do wish that they had been more transparent i've already said that i i wish that they had come out and said it's an x1 and it's going to run this zelda game and there's you know there's zelda because most of us want to play good games on nintendo systems uh nintendo games obviously that are on the nintendo systems are usually the best games on that system you know zelda obviously is going to be a big flagship game for the switch for quite a while people are going to buy the switch to play zelda portably as we go along and that's fine but looking at this chip i think like i said people are kind of disappointed right now but i think people will move on especially when we get closer to e3 i do think e3 is uh big for nintendo right now because they are still have that that feeling of the wii u attached to them and i think if they come out e3 and show just how capable the switch is even with an x1 uh, i think i think they will pull people in third parties i think already want to develop for it we already know indie games indie developers do but i do think it's probably cheaper to develop for the switch overall just because apparently the dev kits are cheap um, so indies will show up and it's going to come down to do we get, is, is call of duty there is madden there is basketball and fifa there basketball and fifa are there is it going to be Madden and is it going to be Call of Duty? Those are big system sellers from third parties. And from there, the Switch sells, more jump on board, and we go from there. So let me know you guys think down below about the X1 being in the Switch. It is the most capable handheld ever made. It is the strongest handheld we'll probably see for a long time. As a home console, yes, it's underpowered compared to the Xbox One and the PS4. But I do think it's still capable overall, and it's especially a very impressive handheld. So let me know what you guys think down below. I'm very curious, and I will see you next time.